Hello everybody, I hope you are all doing well. Last weekend I visited the stunning Glendalo National Reserve in Wicklow, Ireland. I'd initially planned to paint on plein air on that day, but I arrived later in the afternoon with two others and due to the time, I wasn't able to paint. Instead, I went on a three to three and a half hour long hike across and around lakes, through some of the forestry, walking across a valley which used to be a mine many years ago and up one of the mountainsides to reach the top of the waterfall. The place was incredible, I saw probably 300 opportunities to paint, the different kinds of lighting, mood and atmosphere was very inspiring. I was taken by surprise by some of the natural scenes which I hadn't expected to see not very far from Dublin city. Instead of painting, I took all of it in and recorded some of it on camera. On my way up the mountainside, I noticed just on the other side of the waterfall stream that there was a few deers just relaxing, eating grass. Those sights were the inspiration for this video. I knew I wanted to draw or paint some deers and decided to make a video on it for you. So, in this video I'm going to show you how I typically approach animal drawing with a focus on deers, of course. Step 1. The gesture line, flow or energy or action. So to begin with, when drawing animals, I like to focus on getting the gesture of the animal down quickly. I will hold my pencil in this overhand grip and look for the flow, the line of action, the central line of energy that moves through the animals from head to toe. This is actually the same approach I have when sketching gesture drawings of people. Once I recognize and pinpoint exactly where that line of action flows, I will lay it down on my sketchbook. This serves as the foundation for both the gesture sketch and for more detailed sketches for me. From here, I begin to work on top and build up the foundation of the animal. Step number two, sketching in oval shapes for the main areas. In this next step, I usually like to draw three oval shapes which serve as a guide and a foundation for the most important areas of the body in the pose. These are usually positioned as the head with a smaller oval and then two larger ovals that make up the front and back main areas of the body. From here, I almost have the very basic skeleton to work on top of. I make sure to sketch in gesture lines for all of the four of the legs and then I start sketching in the smaller shapes which make up the rest of the body. Step number three, connecting all of the shapes in space with foreshortening. Whatever you're drawing, you always need to keep foreshortening in mind. Foreshortening is a technique used in drawing to create the illusion of depth and three dimensionality on a two dimensional surface. It involves shortening or distorting certain parts of an object to give the impression that it is receding into space. By exaggerating the angles and proportions of the object, foreshortening can add a sense of drama and dynamism to your drawing, making it more visually interesting and engaging. This technique is commonly used in figure drawing as it allows artists to accurately depict the human form from different angles and perspectives, but it is also just as important for animal drawing. Mastering foreshortening requires a good understanding of perspective, anatomy, and spatial relationships, as well as a keen eye for observation and an ability to think three-dimensionally. I can create a more detailed drawing video on foreshortening in the near future. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Step number four, use varying line weights to convey space, depth and areas of focus. When drawing deers and other animals, using varying line weights can be a powerful tool for conveying space, depth and areas of focus. By using heavier lines for objects that are closer to the viewer and lighter lines for objects that are further away, you can create a sense of depth and distance in your drawing. Additionally, using thicker lines for the areas of the animal that are most important or the focal point of the drawing can draw the viewer's attention to that particular area. This technique can be particularly effective when combined with other drawing techniques such as shading and texture to create a fully realized and dynamic animal drawing. 
Experimenting with different line weights can also help you develop your own unique style and approach to drawing animals. I've created a video on line weight drawing in the past. If you'd like to check it out, check the link in the description. Step number five, drawing contour lines that wrap around the form. When drawing, contour lines are a common technique used to define the shape of an object or figure. One way to add depth and dimensionality to your drawing is to use contour lines that wrap around the form of the object or figure you are drawing. These lines can help to emphasize the three-dimensional nature of the subject, making it appear more solid and substantial. By paying close attention to the curves and angles of the object or figure and carefully placing the contour lines to follow those contours, you can create the illusion of volume and weight in your drawing. This technique can be especially effective when combined with shading and other techniques that help to create contrast and definition within the drawing. Overall, using contour lines that wrap around the form can help to elevate the realism and visual impact of your drawings. If I'm doing a very quick gesture drawing, I might suggest some contour lines in a few areas to give an indication of form, but this step is more important for drawings that go beyond the gesture sketch. Step number six, using the blending stump to assist in blending. When it comes to creating a smooth and seamless look in your drawings, blending can be an important technique to master. One tool that can be particularly helpful in achieving a smooth blend is the blending stump. This tool is a cylindrical piece of paper that is tightly rolled and pointed at one end. By rubbing the blending stump over areas of your drawing where you want to blend the lines or colors together, you can create a soft blended effect. The blending stump can also be used to create gradations of tone or to smooth out areas that look too rough or choppy. When using a blending stump, some artists say it's important to clean it regularly by rubbing it on a piece of scrap paper or by using a sandpaper pad as it can easily become saturated with graphite or other media. I actually prefer to allow the graphite to build up on the surface of the blending stump so I can use it to add additional gradation in shaded areas. I don't use it all over the drawing, only on select areas, and I keep pressure in mind. With practice, using the blending stump can become an essential part of your drawing technique, helping you to achieve a polished and professional looking finish in your work. I will make a more detailed video demonstration on shading with a blending stump in the near future if you'd like me to. Step number seven, go back and forth correcting until you arrive at the finished sketch. When it comes to sketching, it's uncommon to make mistakes or encounter challenges along the way. One technique that can be helpful in achieving a finished sketch is to go back and forth correcting and adjusting until you arrive at the final version. You can see me doing this a number of times on each of the deer sketches. This can involve taking a step back from your work periodically to assess the overall composition, making small adjustments to individual elements, and refining your lines and shading as you go. By being patient and persistent in your corrections, you can gradually work towards a finished sketch that accurately captures the subject matter and conveys the desired mood or tone. This approach can also help to build your confidence as an artist as it allows you to experiment and try new things without being overly attached to a particular outcome. With practice, going back and forth to correct your sketch can become a natural and effective part of your creative process. So here are some unique and interesting features of deers. Deer are fascinating creatures with a number of unique and interesting features. One of the most notable features of deer is their antlers, which are used for a variety of purposes, including attracting mates and establishing dominance over other males. Interestingly, only male deer grow antlers, which are shed and regrown each year. Deer are also known for their incredible speed and agility, with some species capable of running up to 60 miles per hour and leaping up to 30 feet in a single bound. In addition, Deers are well known for their keen senses, including their acute sense of hearing and sense of smell, which they use to detect predators and other potential threats. Another interesting feature of deer is their diet, which typically consists of leaves, twigs and other vegetation. 
that can also include fruits and nuts in certain seasons. Overall, the unique and interesting features of deer make them a popular subject for wildlife enthusiasts and artists alike. In addition to their antlers and speed and senses, deers are also known for their distinctive physical features. Many species of deer have spots on their fur which can help to camouflage them in their natural environment. The spots can also be used to identify different types of deer as each species has a unique pattern. Deer hooves are another unique feature as they are adapted for running and jumping over terrain. Their hooves are split into two parts which can help them grip the ground and maintain their balance while running. Another interesting feature of deer is their large eyes and ears which are adapted to detect movement and sound from long distances. Deer can rotate their ears to better hear sounds coming from different directions and their large eyes provide them with a wide field of vision which is useful for detecting predators. Overall, the combination of these unique and interesting features make deer one of the most fascinating and beloved animals in the natural world, and a joy to draw and paint. Continuing on with the pencil sketches, I sketch in each deer following the same steps, and sometimes even forgetting to draw the gesture line of action first, but including it quickly after I realise, and work on filling up my double sketchbook page. I would also recommend taking a bit of time to do a proper sketch warm-up session before you take on these animal drawings. I didn't do it on this occasion, but usually I will take a blank sheet of paper and fill it with ellipses, circles, straight lines, and the skating, the figure eight over and over again in one spot on the page to get my hand-to-eye coordination working properly. Drawing deer can be a challenging task, but with some practice and patience, it can also be a rewarding and enjoyable experience. Here are a few further tips for drawing them. So just to remember to start with the basic shapes, begin by sketching out the basic shapes of the deer, such as its body, head and legs. This will help you to establish the overall proportions and structure of the animal. A lot of beginner artists seem to want to focus on one small area of detail before they have fleshed out the entire sketch. I would advise against doing this, at least until you are much more proficient and experienced at drawing and would consider yourself more advanced. At that stage, you can usually start with facial features such as the eye or directly draw the outer contour lines and work your way towards a more finished drawing from that. When developing a sketch into a more detailed drawing, pay attention to detail. Deer have many distinctive features such as their antlers, large ears, hooves and spots, so pay close attention to these details when drawing. Take your time and work carefully to capture the unique characteristics of the deer. Next, I'd say use reference images. If you're having trouble drawing a particular aspect of the deer, such as its anatomy or movement, use reference images to guide your drawing. You can find many high quality images of deer online or in wildlife books. Pinterest, I find to be the best resource for photo reference. And you can create a mood board of all the photos to have on one image to look at and work from. Experiment with different media. Don't be afraid to experiment with different drawing media such as charcoal, graphite or coloured pencils. Each medium has its own unique properties and can create different effects in your drawing. Practice regularly. Like any skill, drawing takes practice to master. Set aside time each day to practice your drawing skills and you'll soon see improvements in your technique and confidence. I didn't bring my sketchbook to Glendalough Reserve as I had expected to paint and had no idea what it'd be like, but if you are planning on visiting a place that is likely to have wildlife, take one with you so you can sketch the deer from life. I hope you found some of these tips useful and that you find some time to practice drawing deers in your sketchbook. Deers are beautiful animals and you can find lots of very inspiring photography online to work from with excellent lighting and colours. I will have another shorter video coming up on drawing a slightly quicker gesture sketch of a deer soon and I will explain the process for that as well. 
Let me know what you thought of this video. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have any other drawing tutorial video suggestions, please let me know what they are in the comments. I'll just let the rest of this video play showing the remainder of my deer sketching. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all next time.